the Art African Trail Run 2020, the launch. My name is Mark Collins. I'm the event director. This is my brother John. He is the race director. You are here in our studio, best studio on earth at this point in time. This is not a green screen. This is real. Guys, we are at Blokrans, the notorious Blokrans crossing. Blokrans is about a quarter of the way through the Reto. The Reto, remember, is the west to east running of the Otto. So you come across this way behind us and up here. And for about 500 of you lucky participants, this is what you're going to be doing in five weeks from now. You're going to be coming across that river back there. So this is the launch of the event. Just bear with us. Blokrans is notorious for its crossing. It's also notorious for not having connectivity. But at the moment, it looks like we do have. Yeah, we do have. We do yeah. have a lot of our participants on a Zoom call here, uh, live, and we have got some uh, interviews backed up for you guys and then uh, very important on behalf of our host South African National Park I'd like to welcome you here to the to the Titicama section of the Garden Route National Park uh, right here at the heart of it in Blokrans. Um, I have to say South African National Parks our hosts have been absolutely fantastic in, in making this event happen uh, it is one of the first events post our, uh, the peak of our epidemic here in South Africa to take place one of the first events in uh, trail runs in the world to take place as you know the parks uh, mandate in South Africa is to conserve our wilderness areas that's their primary mandate but uh, hats off to them and, and their attitude and the safe sensible compliant way in which they've looked at our event and, 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 and helped us to make this possible we are, are very very grateful for that also uh, a big thank you to Wesgro who are making this uh, live coverage possible very very technically difficult live coverage possible and the footage and coverage of the race at a, at a later stage we'll be talking about some of our other sponsors later on in the event uh, and then later on uh, you know we're going to be discussing all our top competitors uh, that John has got lined up there we're going to be saying who the contenders are for this year's event and then John and I if this time we're going to try and get down onto Blokrans and actually race each other across the river later on I reckon I will beat John hands down uh, swimming and technical stuff is not his forte he fancies himself as the endurance athlete amongst us I think it's appropriate at this time that we probably cut to one of the interviews that we have stored uh, that we did earlier in the week with Grant Krutbrum, a senior member of the team from South African National Park here, uh, and to hear what he has to say about the hosting of the Otter African Trail Run 2020. So Grant, uh, firstly, uh, what, I, what I just want to say is I've been privy to some of the things that have been going on behind the scenes here, and, and what you guys have had to do to get the park open and then to get the go-ahead for the otter. So I think just on behalf of us, the organizers, and behalf of all the trail runners, my, my first thing is I'd like to say thank you very much. We do appreciate that. And from our side, um, like you have mentioned, there was a lot of work that went into reopening the parks and especially the go-ahead for the otter trail run. One of our firm beliefs um, at Tsukama is the park that we manage, we manage it on behalf of the people and people should be able to enjoy all the facilities within a national park, irrespective of what troubles might lie ahead or what um, are troubled or within the specific times. We also find it very important to consider um, the continuation of the Otter Trail Run, which is very important to both sand parks and to yourself. But tell me now, it's certainly uh, challenging in terms of operations, keeping the trail maintained and that, is, is, has that been affected uh, by, the, by the pandemic and the, the lockdown? Sand parks, or specifically our rangers, have been working behind the scenes since the beginning of the lockdown up to now. A lot of sand parks rangers um, conducted their day-to-day -day activities. I can say that lockdown was actually, um, to a large extent, a huge contributor in terms of us being able to conduct certain um, specific maintenance activities on our various um, trails. So yes, our trails are in a very good shape and you'll see the result. Well, fantastic. I can't wait. You know, one of the privileges we have as the organizers is we get to do the scout run. So yeah. I've got a scout run coming up. Yeah. Last year, the feedback from our scout runs from all of us and some of them trained auditors yes. uh, was that the trail was in the best condition of the 11 years of the event. So I think we're really looking forward to seeing what that has done. One of the things, you know, we come here with trail runners and, and uh, you know, I think trail runners have got a very high environmental awareness, but it comes, it comes with a little bit of uh, complacency. You don't realize just by being here, we have an impact. Just by, just by visiting a wilderness area, you impact it, you impact the way the animals react. And, and it's quite interesting to know that. And I think, you know, one of the things we try to get across 
in our thing is that we must take responsibility for mitigating our footprint as far as we can. You know, obviously you've got to live, we've all got to be here, we've all got to breathe, we've got to come into the parks, but, but mitigating. So simple things, and, and, and your conservationist, your, your scientists have said to me a long time, just by cutting off a road, uh, having participants go with a yes. cycle race or a run or whatever on a road, it does affect what happens. Absolutely. Not always just too negative, sometimes you've got to balance that, but it does make an impact. Absolutely. And that's, that's something I think... Uh, and we certainly would try to propagate to our participants. The relationship between um, Sandparks and the event organisers and also the participants of the event over the years has grown to such an extent where I think every, every participant at this point in time um, became a conservationist in his or her own right. The respect that the race participants have for this event, I think over the years we've created a lot of conservation awareness. So we are looking forward to have people returning to our park and those that have been running the trail run for quite a number of, of years to come back and to teach the younger runners, if I may call them the younger runners, what it is all about. The, the last thing that I would like to touch, to, to touch on is obviously the pandemic. I have observed here in the park in the last two times, the actual protocols put in here are very much by the book. You take your, your visitors uh, safety very, very seriously. And I've seen throughout the national park, everything that, that you guys are doing is absolutely by the book in terms of safety and, and sensible measures. As we stand here today, we are proud to say that our protocols are in line with the national regulations in terms of the COVID pandemic and everything that we do, every, every small little protocol that we follow is to ensure that everyone that enters our gates are in a safe environment and that they can enjoy nature to the fullest extent, irrespective of the pandemic still being with, with us or not. Great, and I, I, I have to say it's, it's been the, the best implementation of it that I've seen across the board uh, in, in any place where I've gone. Again, all I have to say is, is thank you very much. I'm super excited. It is a privilege for me every time I visit this park under any circumstances. So I can't wait to be the author. And thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to the team. Thank you, Grant. Uh, Grant, Grant Quick from Mem from South, uh, South African National Parks. Very important. I, th I think the most the most important thing after participant safety here is the environment. Uh, basically, you know, we all have a footprint. And I'm very much of the opinion mm. that trail running is one of the sports that you can do in a natural environment with the least amount of impact. And that's not to say there is no impact. There's definitely an impact. But it, it is a sport that you can actually practice with a very limited impact in, in, an, in, a, in, a, in a wilderness environment. One of the founding philosophies of the Art African Trail Run is that we leave this uh, trail better than we found it every year. And so whatever we do here, we have, to, we have to mitigate not only our footprint, we have to actually give it back to sand parks better, better than we found it. And over the years, we worked very, very closely with them on that. And, and one of the, the sort of joint initiatives, a uh, world first, was our environmental cleaning station. And not many uh, hikers or trail runners are, are aware that when you come into an, an area like this and you've been running in another part of the world, oh. you do carry seeds on your shoes, on your clothes, on your backpack. Um, and those seeds germinate and, and all over the world along hiking trails have noticed that there is a proliferation of exotic invader species and it's attributed to that. So the environmental cleaning station that you will see, actually you clean your shoes, you clean your, your backpack, you clean everything that you bring in here and make sure that you are not contaminating uh, this trail. Just a little bit more about our environmental mm. footprint, I think two, two things that I'm particularly excited about. Uh, one of the things is, is, is cable ties. Cable ties is one of the most effective tools for an event organizer but that plastic that disposable plastic mm. uh, just it's just not good yes. enough and we're very mm. excited to be using reusable cable ties this year sponsored by Hilleman that's mm. uh, that's going to yes. make a big difference to to what we throw away mm. at the end of this and, 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 mm. and reducing our waste and then obviously going cupless I think uh, that is a big step cups are, are again a, a fantastic tool for an event but mm. the waste is just unacceptable exactly, yeah. and and making a cupless mm. event and energy is sponsoring our super light silicon cups you can actually use them on the race and at all the stations uh, and carry them with you. Uh, remember Yen Don Washup, the professor, the great mm, yeah. professor, the guy who won the, he won the Arthur Trail three times, Jeez, twice yeah. second. He used to carry a little cup in front. Yeah, he carried a little cup. That was his yeah. strategy and he used to drink from the streams with that little cup. So uh, he was way ahead of his time. Mm. When you do something in an environment like this, you have a greater responsibility than just your own fulfillment. I think, I think it's something that resonates with all trail runners 
and, and I find it resonates particularly with, with uh, our, our pros and I've, I've had a lot of feedback from that. Okay, uh, mm. I mean, uh, being able to run in an mm. environment like this, what, what does that mean to you? You know, wilderness areas are, are very important to me. Um, and to probably everyone listening to this interview and more and more to humanity. I think, you know, the topic is coming up more and more in, in everyday conversation, which is amazing. Um, but I think that particularly wilderness coastlines are a very rare thing. It's not often you see a stretch of coast that's so beautiful and completely untouched or almost completely untouched by, by humans. So it's oh, such a highlight of the Otter Trail every year, being able to see that kind of raw interaction between land and the ocean is something that you just don't experience. A coastline reserve is something very, very special. Thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, Kane Riley there, uh, one, of, one of the contenders. Uh, we're thrilled to have Kane racing this race. And, and then we talk about Kane, Kane and Ryan Sands. They've got a great friendship and an even greater rivalry. Um, and there's a race within a race. There's, uh, a private investor mm. has put up 10,000 rand to see who's going to be the fastest out of those two. But just while we're talking environment, would anyone else like to answer that, that question? What does it mean to be uh, running in this pristine wilderness? I've been lucky enough to, to race all around the, the world and racing the, the Otter in 2011 just made me realize how special the, the route is. Uh, just having that direct interaction with, with trails and the ocean. You don't get that anywhere else in the world. And I've said on a number of occasions, if there's one trail I could run day in and day out, it would probably be the, the otter. Running in a protected wilderness feels in incredibly special. I see a huge responsibility for us as a civilization to minimize our impact into nature. Yeah, I think the, the coastline stretch of the otter, it's really such a big privilege to be able to run there and that it's been preserved for so many years. And yeah, the fact that us as trail runners can uh, run it once a year it's um, something I look forward to every year it's literally it's my sixth otter and um, I, I love um, that that piece of uh, coastline and, and it's just incredible to to witness everything on the trail guys um, the huge news the absolutely huge news of the otter this year is of course that Ryan Sands uh, South Africa's most well-known most accomplished trail runner ultra distance trail runner is taking part in the otter this year and we're absolutely thrilled to have Ryan back. For those of you who don't know, Ryan won the third otter. Mm. Uh, he was here. I was also standing right here. I watched Ryan swim. He had probably until last year the worst swim I had seen on the Otter African Trail Run. Uh, I mean, let, let, let's just get Ryan's views on mm. Blowcrons for a start. Ryan, that Blowcrons swim was, was, was terrible. Jeez, when I did it in 2011, I had a proper swim there. Um... I keep telling the, the younger trail runners that they give me a hard time about the times being a bit slower when I raced in 2011 that um, I think I spent about an hour swimming around Blowcrans so um, if it wasn't for that I would have run sub 4 and no, I'm joking um, yeah but no but getting back to, to Blowcrans it is, is um, or just all, all the river crossings they definitely add a dynamic to the race where um, suddenly like going across a river it really spikes your heart rate you're out of your comfort zone everything's wet you start to chafe and and there are also a number of other river crossings along the way so that, that definitely like adds a adds a challenge and and i think that that's what's great about the otter is that there's so many external challenges um, it's not like just kind of putting on your shoes and and um, like putting your head down and running you really have to i think have a good all-round um, kind of gauge of, of skills i don't know if he remembers the the Sandman Surge. The Sandman Surge. Just, just remind him. Remind him of where that is. Okay, so what, 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 mm. what happened is Ryan was leading the race. He was looking so comfortable. He was, as, as, a, as yeah. a event director, I was a little disappointed. And he got in there and he got mm. washed. As he was about to get out, he got washed about, about 50 meters upstream. Uh, and then washed back. Mm. And the look on his face was absolutely priceless. Yeah. While we're talking Blowcrans, John. Uh, uh, John, so, uh, John has won this race. Before any of these guys won the race, before any of these guys were considered contenders, John was actually the first winner of this race and he was notorious for taking the most aggressive line across Blowcrans. Of course, that was in the classic, that was going that way. John, will you just point out the most aggressive line where you went, where you would go in, in your day when you were running? There's a little gully. I don't know if you can see the little gully. That's, that's the ideal route that you'd aim for. Uh, the safe route and where we normally put the, put the, the line is actually further along the cliffs here, um, which means when you get out, you actually do have to clamber over the cliffs a little bit. But um, 
you can save up to two minutes taking a direct line but that's that's the judgment on the day and that's what the marshals will actually have to make a call on but john i think yeah. you alluded to a very important point there coming across the, the blow crimes is one of the big things that that differs this event in terms of management yeah. from other events yeah. And, and it's changed a lot. Over, it changes every year. So with every big storm, it changes, mm. and it changes a lot. Yeah. Now, in your day, and, and, and when we used to run it only over a low tide, you used to go across there because it was shallow there. So, so it, it's, ever, it's ever changing, and, and it's critical. One of the critical things about the Art African Trail Running is our, is our river team that we have mm. down here. Our, our river mm. captain uh, who, with a vast experience from the NSRI, as well as the, the Woodridge School uh, life-saving team that is here, and they manage this, this, this mm. uh, crossing very, very safely. So that's one of the big, big factors, and I think maybe, maybe, maybe the guys will tell us a bit how the Blowkrantz affects their planning of, of the race. Uh, Mark, it's great to see you at Blowkrantz there, um, and it's something which is in a lot of people's mind leading up to the race. Blowkrantz is something everyone's heard about, you might not have seen it before you race the course for the first time, so you're unsure what to expect. Um, in my mind, I'd say Blokrantz is an interesting factor because you definitely can't win a race at Blokrantz, but you can definitely lose the race. If you get rattled, you lose your mojo, the race is gone. If you keep your calm and you just actually see it for what it is, it's a few minutes of cooling down, it actually can be a non-factor. It just matters how each individual person manages it. Um, I think Blokrantz, yeah, it's, it's a massive part of what makes the Otten Reto a real adventure as opposed to just a, a trail run. Um, you know, it, the swim is not really significant enough to make it a race that favors someone who's good in the water. Um, I think the key to Blokrantz is just having a smooth crossing and not letting it kind of get to you or, or freak you out. I've seen guys who go in and heart rate spike and then it has a big effect in the race. But um, yeah. Good opportunity to kind of cool down, rest your legs a little bit, and just yeah, a little bit of a break up between between running. Yeah, it depends on the the tides, but normally for me, it's it's actually a, a nice, refreshing um, sort of outing. I look forward to it. It's fun. You always see the the marshals; they're very helpful, and um, yeah, I always encourage um, all the participants to really look forward to to your first blow crown's crossing. Uh, the blow crown's crossing is an interesting one I think at that stage of the race um, for the Reto we are pretty fresh still um, you're only 13 or so k's in so you know um, it's it's a nice little refreshment um, just gotta hope that the salt water doesn't cause any uh, discomfort um, but no it's a it's a great crossing and I think if you can hit the tide right um, you know it, it shouldn't affect it too much um, if you end up swimming a little bit, you know, just you got to keep positive and think of it more, maybe more as a, a bit of a cool off. Right. Uh, I think we should start talking about why we got these guys on the line. We should start talking a little bit about the race. It, it, very exciting this year. Uh, you know, it, it is a South African race. Totally, uh, totally South African. We don't have any internationals. I mean, that apologies, are apologies yeah. to Mark Leinstein yeah, yeah. because yeah. he's an honorary South African, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but but this, he can't get here this year. So, so a South African race, and the big question that everyone's asking is, will, will four hours, well, first of all, who's going to win it? Mm. Will four hours be broken for the men? Will 440 be broken for the women? Exactly. Uh, this is most probably the most exciting race we've had in our 12 years of, of history in, on the Otto African Trail Run. Uh, we yeah. have no idea, absolutely no idea, of, of historical training or or race leading okay. up to here, so we, it's, it's a dark horse this year. Okay, John, you were, you were the guy who said it would never be done. Now, it's uh, been done by international. You said it would never be done in yeah. four hours. Now, what do you say now? Who, is a South African, before Def I get there? Definitely, definitely. I think, I think our South African records are going to be, be broken this year. Uh, let's talk about the women's race first. I mean, Tony, Tony's there. So, Tony, your time on the Reto, if I'm not mistaken, 4.42, your first ever Art African trail run, 4.42. You know, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, are, are, do you think you can do it? And, 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 and who are your contenders? I think the Reto offers a very unique opportunity to hit that sub 4.40, makes it a much more uh, achievable goal. Because of that first stretch, it's super runnable, the, the stretch along the beach and then that first ridge line, um, you know, there's, it's, it's a much faster section of the race and to be able to do that on fresh legs will 
really set the tone for the race and I think if we as the female field can keep a good solid consistent pace throughout the rest of the race I think it's a very realistic um, goal to be set um, and you know there's a, a huge um, depth of talent within the women's field this year um, and Ruth Croft and Holly Page in 2018 showed that you know sub 440 is possible I do truly believe that we are up there with the international women and we just need to believe in ourselves a bit more. Sure. Between between some of the athletes that are on are lining up in the women's field this year, it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me wouldn't surprise me in one bit. I think I think given the amount the amount of racing opportunities it's been this year, I think that people have been out there and really putting in some good training. I'd say, you know, Tony Tony and Bianca are definitely, are, you know, I think the girls are, I'm pretty terrified to line up against. Um, and I'm not actually 100% sure who else is in the field, but Nicolette is a superhuman athlete. And if she's in the mix, if she's racing, I would definitely pick her for somewhere on the podium. 440 for the ladies race is definitely going to be broken this year. Um, Tony McCain definitely shown some, some grit last year. I think Lundy would have loved to be um, running for 440. Um, she was she came close to it a couple of times, um, but yeah, she's uh, growing our family. I think 2020 is probably one of the best years um, for it to to be broken um, because of the fact that it's it's so close. I think the the record now is 442, so it's literally two minutes, and I believe. Tony and those girls who've actually run those those times are um, coming back to after 2020. So um, in my mind, I think the the first sub 440 will definitely be happening. And then I mean, probably one of the fastest girls ever to step foot on this course. She didn't have this is her second otter. So mm -hmm. her first otter, she blitzed the three quarters of the course. Uh, Bianca Tarbiton. Uh, Bianca, as you will remember, last year was her first otter. She is as fast as lightning. But she ran out of any she got a nutrition wrong guys and that is a lesson for all of us uh, mm -hmm. and it's a lesson that shows that even the top athletes get this wrong we all know what she is capable of what what lessons bianca going going into this year's race what are you going to do differently definitely if you haven't at this point try and work out your nutrition and get that right also i'd say maybe try and do at least one long run even just to build your confidence and then i'd say also just try to prioritize the small things like health and sleep and good food and less stress because those sorts of things make a big difference in a race like Arta. So uh, just uh, just a month away from the Arta, uh, what what advice would you give to uh, trail runners now? One month away, what what should, what should they be thinking? A month out from the race, you should get one or two specific runs in. So try and make them a little bit longer in distance, try and make them specific to the otter route if you can. Have a look at the profile, um, but rather don't go crazy, just keep all your energy and excitement for the day uh, so that you have the energy and the sufficient smiles to keep going when you need it the most. If there's only one month left to the race, it's probably time to do the last key trainings but especially to start the tapering meaning that yeah, you should start to take it more easy and definitely don't overdo it the work is done start to lean back so that your energy bucket will be full because on d-day you will need all single bits of energy which are in your body what advice would i give market for me to give advice to runners at this point is really a bit but comical it's been 10 years since i've run the otter um, and the front guys now are so far beyond what we were doing when we sort of jogged along and thought sub five was fast. It's a completely different sport now. So the people I can maybe give a bit of advice to is more the, the back half of the field. And I'd say just don't be scared to walk. You can walk all the hills and comfortably run in the five to six hour mark and really enjoy the experience. I would say enjoy the race, run your best race, and really have a great time out there. After all, that's why we run trail. I uh, just want to say good luck to every one of you. It's unfortunate I won't be able to raise the Retro 2020. I guess I would say to anyone one month out from the race is just enjoy the process. It's a, yeah, it's a privilege to be able to 
race and especially now during this time I think to have something to work towards and train towards is such a privilege and a joy. Right uh, John, uh, time to turn our attention to the men's race and you you predicting that the four hour barrier will be broken. Now it's a question of, of, of who. Um, first of all, I think let's, Mark was the first person in the world to ever run the Otter under four hours. Um, I was standing right here when he came past here and that's when I knew he, he had a mm. chance of doing right here. I was standing right here, right here. Oh, give me yeah. goosebumps. Yeah. So Mark, uh, uh, do you think a South African will go sub four? Well, four hours is hard to beat. I know it quite well. It took all out of me for the first time to, to run that and I'm not sure I will be ever be able to run that again. But I really hope so because I know that there are great competitors out there who are able to, but it takes a great day, it takes again great conditions to run this, but uh, I'm crossing my fingers that it will happen. Okay, I'm really interested to see what some of the other guys think. I definitely think it's possible for a sub four to be run by one of the men. Um, I understand it hasn't been done by a South African, but it's really come close. And I think that with the lockdown and the lack of races, hopefully everybody would have trained smart and will be fresh for um, one good race. And we've seen records falling all over the world due to that at the moment. So no reason why it shouldn't happen at Otter too. Both records for the, the guys and the ladies will be broken. Yeah, so will a sub four Otter be run by a South African this year? Um, I definitely think so. I think with, with lockdown, guys are generally kind of being able to, to do much more specific racing. Otter is one of the few events this year that is actually taking place. So my money would be on a, on a South African running sub four. Um, if you ask which South African, um, I'd love to see Kane Riley do it. Um, just as a, as a good, good mate of, of, of mine and I know kind of what that would, would mean to him. So I'd be, I'd be super stoked to, to see Ken go sub four. I know the men's field is going to be very tight, but I, I see Ken Riley and Johard van Yarden and possibly a sub four can happen this year. Sure. Yes. My hedge, I'm hedging my bets. It's, it's going to happen. The, the talent in the male field is huge. Um, and they're just going to egg each other on and I think it's going to be a super exciting race to follow along. Uh, it's, it's very possible. I mean, if you look at Johart's time last year, he was so, so close. And I think that another year with some pretty good uninterrupted training for the last few months, there's a field this year who will really push each other um, to run fast. And I think the chances of someone sticking us up for are not unlikely at all. So. I'm going to say that a sub four will happen this year on the men's side. Yeah, I think I will actually have to put my money on that as well, seeing as um, last year there was a 402 by Joad van Jerden, who I believe is also running this year. So that means also, again, two minutes that he needs to shave off. And um, with it being his second or I think third otter, I think, I'm sure he has the experience now. And um, yeah, it's also the Reto, which I believe is, is slightly faster. So. Very good chances, all depends on the conditions, but I really think there's a, the best chance this year. For the men, I definitely think the sub four hour will be broken. Uh, Yara just, I mean, he got two minutes to, to take off and, and that's how you run Otter, you build experience from the previous year. So yes, definitely, in my opinion. John, Christian's yep. got four black medals. Okay, so if you don't know what a black medal is, you've got to run sub 430 for a black medal. Christian's got four and uh, Christian, I'd be very interested to know what you see as the who you see as the contenders for this year's race. I think uh, looking at the history of Otter, uh, definitely Rory Sheffer's got a good chance. Robert Rory's got a good chance. Gain Riley's got a good chance. And I've been on three podiums, so I would give myself a chance. Uh, I think definitely the dark horse for this race is Mvuzi. Watch this guy; he's been placing fifth, fourth for the last three years, and he's really working his way up with a strategic plan. Uh, Christian yeah, puts Christian. himself up there and uh, you know, when Christian says something like that, I think, I think take him seriously. Uh, he's he is. In, in form. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we can't wait to see all of you here in a month's time. We'll be doing live coverage from here. We're doing the live coverage right here and I'll be able to see which of you guys, which of our top contenders is going to be coming across those rocks 
I anticipate in roughly 58 minutes. And I expect all of you guys, uh, top contenders, to be here in under an hour 10. Uh, that's probably the mark to get across Blow Cross. Thank you so much, and good luck with the last few weeks of your preparations. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Right, guys, very important there, like I mentioned, is the live coverage of this race. And, and this is one of the, the key points of the race, uh, seeing who comes across Blow Cross first. So this is what make sure that on the, on the 31st of October, you are nowhere but in front of your screen watching what happens here, what goes down here. Now, just onto some logistics uh, of this race. Uh, you all will be aware that this is a reto year. In other words, uh, the Otter African Trail Run starts on that side and finishes on that side. Starts on Nature's Valley and we go, uh, we head east to Storms River. That means that the whole event is based out of Storms River Rest Camp, which is on the eastern side of the Titsikama National Park. Now this is really important for your logistics and accommodation arrangements if you haven't made them yet. And roughly that is about equally distance from the Port Elizabeth Airport as it is from the George Airport. So very important to bear that in mind in your uh, arrangements for this event. The other thing impacting this event obviously is the yes, COVID, COVID compliance. Mm -hmm. um, now the Otter, very fortunately, uh, the way it's been structured in the past with a prologue run over a period of eight hours uh, between registration and the 4.30 cutoff and the staggered starts. It is very much a COVID compliant or a social distancing event as it is. So with very little dif difference we've had to make to actually get the race part of us, the running part of this event, uh, compliant with uh, COVID. Now, as you know, the levels have gone down. It's a lot safer. Gatherings of 250 people are allowed indoors, 500 people outdoors. We still want to be sensible, safe and compliant, particularly for your safety and with very little effort on your part uh, to make this happen. So we do ask all our participants, please, to observe the social distancing. Please, whenever you're in contact with other people, whenever you're not running, make sure you have a face mask on. Uh, or a boof. Uh, this is important not as much for your own protection but for protecting other people from any infection that you may have and not even know about. I mean most runners are healthy people. A lot of people will be asymptomatic with this disease. Um, uh, you know the, the type of runners that we have and, and, and so just be aware of other, other participants. The other very important thing is that um, entering the park there are certain protocols and these do take a little bit of an administrative time. So we will have more about this how to do it in our newsletters, information about exactly what you need to do. But please pay attention to these. These are very important for a smooth flowing, safe uh, and great otter. Um, the main things that will be impacted by this is obviously gatherings, uh, briefing and prize giving. And those are things we will study very, very carefully before we implement them. Our briefing may very well be di done digitally online like we are doing this launch. Um, so those are things to, to observe. And I think, I think we're getting to the stage where yeah. we can almost wrap this up now. Talk about a race within a race. I've got a race against my butt across Blow Crans. So uh, I don't know how you're feeling, John. Oh, jeez. I've heard uh, all sorts of <laughs> excuses about niggles, but uh, time to come. Time to, to go. Talk, talk is cheap. Talk. Let's do it. Let's do it.